I'm sitting here with Michael Feathers, the author of the book Working Effectively with Legacy Code, which has helped thousands of developers since it was published in 2004. If you were to write the book like today, is there anything about it you'd change? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing because I almost feel like the core of the book, the core ideas are kind of like a little bit timeless in a way. And that's why I guess it still continues to sell very well now. Um, but I think it would make more nods to current technology, you know? We could should probably deal with a question that uh, is very popular at this uh, at this time, very much in the in the media, and it's AI and machine learning and what effect that will have on code quality and legacy code in particular. Uh, is refactoring going to be outdated? How do you recognize if you're sitting with a legacy code base? Well, I don't think there's any hard line with it, really. I think it's, you know, legacy is a subjective judgment that we make quite often based upon the difficulty and the hard, hardness to understand something that we're working with. I try really hard not to have people read code because humans read code very slowly. The compiler is so powerful, type systems have gotten so good. You can actually gain a lot of confidence if you know how to work with it. And I just realized that essentially in C, it's kind of like if you mess up, you're, you're in real serious trouble because there's like, it's hard to know when you messed up and then basically just get these random crazy errors because you're trouncing over memory and stuff like that. So I think there's this interesting thing about kind of starting out with unforgiving tools to go and sort of build your discipline. And yours is the first definition uh, formulation of TDD I've seen that actually includes make it compile. I, thought, I think I feel much more comfortable than many people putting some of the tests kind of like in the parking lot for a minute and saying, okay, I'm going to go and change the system and I'm going to basically go ahead and do like a structural refactoring that I know the the, the tests aren't going to basically cover completely. So a lot of the struggles that I, I meet with, uh, particularly testing, would be people aren't really experienced with it when they come out of school and then they don't have time to learn it. And it's actually not an easy skill. You kind of start out growing tests from a particular point and then you're refactoring outward. You're basically decomposing things as they get bigger. So your tests are over here, but they basically cover a larger space. I think that's the key message that kind of needs to get across to people rather than this you know, one-to-one -one mapping of um, test classes to, to production classes. Which you also mentioned in the book that uh, you don't mind breaking encapsulation if it makes testing easier. Well, the thing is that, you know, when you say it that way, and I'm not sure exactly how I said it, but that simplification is good, but it's like, it's not saying, hey, I'm a fan of breaking encapsulation, but selectively. One of the things that in Legacy Code that's tough is that basically code grows in a particular way. Well, here's the thing that I think is really a, a very, very critical thing. You know about like the 80-20 rule, right? Like, you know, it's like 80% of the work happens in the last 20% of the project. Just one little plug for something else. There's a small thing I mentioned in the book that I wish I'd really written about more. Every time I talk to people, I sort of offer them as a possibility in scratch refactoring, which is kind of like take the code, throw it into a file, like a just a, a straight, you know, text file as opposed to like your programming language file. So you don't have all the markup about, you know, possible errors and stuff like that. And just start renaming things and moving things around. And don't worry about breaking things because you're never going to check it out. Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.